talk to God often. Even if you're not perfect, just talk to him every day. You don't have to be in the same faith I'm in or you ain't got to call God the same thing I call him. But listen to me, you do have to call him though. It's not going to make your life easy. Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. All you want is the strength to get through your life. On the days that I feel like I'm not going to make it, on the days that it feels like I can't endure anymore, I think back on my track record for surviving all my bad days. And so far, surviving all my bad days, my track record is 100%. It ain't about the money. I know a lot of very, very rich people that's miserable, not happy at all. I can bet you most of you are happier than most of the people I know. And I know some very, very wealthy people. And if money don't make you happy, it helps you through a lot of situations. You know the only thing about money? Money takes all emergencies and turns them into mere human beings. That's what money does. Really, other than that, it, it's, it's a lot to come with. People think when you get famous or rich that your problems is over. More money, more problems. But I'll tell you the truth right now. The problems I got right now, I take them. Because the problems I had when I was homeless, I don't want them. Money gonna change your life a little bit more. All of you gonna get more, but you gotta ask for it. But if that's your desire to get more of it, you gotta ask God for it. If you wanna be happy or successful, you gotta ask God for it. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you don't ask God for it. You have not because you ask not. If you up your ask, he will up his gill. If you change what you ask God for, he immediately changes what he gives to you. You don't need an education to be successful. I don't, I flunked out of school. What God has for you, quit tying it in education. People kill me. I know people got two degrees, but to go back to school and get another. If you got two of them that ain't working for you, why would you go get another one of them? I know people that's mastered and PhD though, ain't even working. You don't need that. I'm telling you, man, your whole success is tied in your relationship to God. You can simplify this by getting in touch with your creator. That's your key, man. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just gotta quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're gonna see exactly why it went that way. And you're gonna be okay with it. But quit tripping during the process. Oh Lord, why me? You ain't the only one. Oh Lord, why me? You ain't the only one. Oh Lord, why I lose my job? You ain't the only one unemployed. Pull yourself together and quit tripping cause you in the process. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. If he was through with you, you would not wake up in the morning. He gonna fix it. Everything is wrong. First of all, let me tell you this right here. Why are you tripping? I look back on my life at all that I've been through. So the stuff I'm currently going through, I have built up enough reservoir that living in the car taught me that this ain't it. So the things I'm going through now, I know this ain't it. That he gonna come get me in a minute. So all I gotta do is sit tight. I ain't in a bad place. Now I ain't where I wanna be, but 
The spot I'm in is better than where I was. I ain't homeless. Everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processing. That's all he's doing. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. And if you need to be tough when you get to where you're going, then he's going to toughen you. If you got to be more caring along the way, he's going to let you have some trials come your way that's going to have to produce that in you. See, the route you on right now is the route you got to take. And it's very uniquely yours. This thing you're going through, this just uniquely yours. You just got to understand you ain't the only one. You ain't the only one going through it. Now, in the order that it's going to happen, it's just yours. have not because you ask not. It simply say you have not because you ask not. But you don't ask because you ain't got that together. When you ask God for something, quit tripping. He got it from here. God can't give you what you want because you want to hold on to what you got. You all in the way. Now you telling him how to bless you. You can't tell God how to bless you. It's a simple process. The only reason I'm telling you this, because this is how I made it. I just do me. I just, I'm just being me. I stay uniquely who I am because you are okay just the way you are. Because you, God made you uniquely who you are. He wanted you to be just like you are. See, God made us very different. This is a, this God we got. God is amazing. He created you so individual. Do you know that it's close to 8 billion people on earth now? Do you know that it's almost 8 billion people on the earth? Do you know how many billions of people have died? Do you know that if you dig up all them people that have died and all the people that are presently here and every last one of them that he gonna make in the future, not one of you have the same fingerprint. Who do that? Who could possibly be so precise in his infinite wisdom that he created you so uniquely that ain't no two people got the same fingerprint? That's crazy. Man. That's real crazy. I got in Amway when I was 21 years old. This, I'm gonna tell you this story. My distributor was this guy named, my sponsor was a guy named John Walker. I lived in Cleveland, he lived in Rochester, New York. I got laid off of Ford Motor Company. I wasn't working, so I didn't have a reason to get up in the morning. Every single morning, at 5.30 on the dock, my phone would ring. I pick up the phone. Steve, this is John Walker. How you doing, man? It's gonna be a great day. How you feeling? Hey man, it's going to be a great day. And he'd hang up. The next day at 5.30 in the morning, bring, hello. Steve, this is John Walker. How you doing, man? It's going to be a great day. How you doing today? John, I'm sick, man. Hey man, just want to tell you it's going to be a great day. Click. Next morning, bring, hello. Now I'm mad now, you know, this been going on a couple weeks. And I kind of know who it is. He didn't change a damn thing. Steve, Sean Walker, how you doing, man? It's gonna be a great day today. Man, I was so bad, man. I hang that phone up. 37 days in a row, he called me the exact same way because he was teaching us. I didn't know it, and every single day, I picked the phone up. Yeah. Steve, John Walker, man. It's yeah, John, yeah, it's going to be a great day, click. And then one day, the 38th day, he, he told me how many days it was. He kept record. He picked up the phone. He said, I said, hello. He said, hey, Steve, it's John Walker. I said, yeah, man. He said, man, can I ask you something? I said, yeah. 
He said, why do you answer the phone like that? I said, what are you talking about? He said, every time I call, I've called you 37 days in a row, and you keep answering the phone like something is wrong. I said, hey, man, you got laid off. You're getting unemployed. Man. You know, I ain't got to get up early, man. I said, well, what's up? He said, I'm really disappointed. In you. He said, man, when are you going to change your attitude? I said, ain't nothing wrong with my attitude. He said, yeah, it is. He said, when you wake up in the morning, man, you got a bad attitude. Which pretty much explains why you've been having a lot of bad things. And he said, man, I hate that about you. Because you're such a cool dude. You got so much potential. He said, man, I'm sorry to bother. And he hung the phone. Man, let me tell you something. That, 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 that cut me so deep, man. Because, you know, I don't like nobody thinking I'm something but I'm acting like I ain't, that, 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 you don't even understand what they did to me. So the next morning, I thought about this all day. I said, man, this dude, he been playing me for 37 days. He been calling me, oh, oh. Next morning, I'm damn near sitting up in the bed. When it's, when it's, Hello? Hey, Steve, it's John Walker. I said, hey, John, what's happening, man? What's going on with you, baby? I said, it's Steve Harvey, man. He said, Steve, how's it going? I said, man, I'm having a great day, man. I'm having a great day, John, man. You don't believe it, man. I got some great stuff gonna be happening. He said, man, you my man. Click, and he hung up. And I wanted him to ask me what had happened, but he never did. Then one day he called me, he said, hey, man, you're going to be sheer greatness because you've learned how to wake up. 21 years later, 22, I got a gig in Chicago on the radio. You know what I was? Morning drive guy. You know what I've been doing since 1991? Every single morning, I'm in 112 cities. I talk to nine and a half million people every week. I have the number one adult contemporary radio show in the world. I wake people up every morning, and I wake people up with the right attitude because my attitude changed. So God turned me into the morning man. It's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Cut it on and watch how I do your every morning. two things, it will transform your life. I'm a motivational speaker, but I'm not doing this. But, and the reason I do really well as a motivational speaker because I know what I'm talking about. You know, I, I, you're looking at somebody been, been at the bottom before. So I'm not like some rich dude whose mama and them had some money and gave me some money, and I'm telling y'all how to get over. No, I'm going to tell you how to get over because I've been under. I'm going to tell you how to get up because I've been down. I'm I'm going I'm, I'm to tell you how to finish because I got off to a bad start. Now, I'm about to tell you two things. Now, listen to me. What I'm about to tell you, this is for spiritual people only. If you're not a spiritual person, this ain't for you. If you don't believe in God, this, this ain't finna do nothing for you. But I ain't know you was coming, so I have no other version. This is only people who have a faith. You ain't got to be no like born again Christian or nothing like that. You, I just, you got to know that God is God. If you understand that, I can help you from here. I'm gonna give you two things that can change your life. It's two scriptures that changed my entire life. It's very simple. The cold thing about what I'm finna tell you is anybody can do it. This is what I'm finna tell you. See, I ain't not finna talk to you about no education, cause I ain't got one. I flunked out of school. I had a severe stuttering problem. I couldn't talk outside my house. I ain't do well in school ever. I ended up flunking out of school. I'm on my third marriage. I lost everything I've owned twice. I've been homeless and lived in a car for three years. I'm finna tell you what I know. This ain't no fancy rich boy answer, no theories, no no. You ain't got to buy no program to do this. You ain't got to go sign up. I'm telling you right now, what I'm finna tell you, 
if you apply it right now, can change your existence. Because everybody I know want to be happy, everybody I know want to be successful. If you don't want them two things, there's something wrong with you anyway. So now here, there is a scripture that I'm going to give you. It's a very small scripture. It's very short. I don't even know where it is in the Bible. Somebody would probably know it if I say it, but I'm going to give it to you. This scripture changed my life. You have not because you ask not. You have any idea how major those words are for you? You have not because you ask not. It's such a simple scripture, but it's in your Bible. It ain't just in rich people's Bible. It's in the same copy you got. You have not because you ask not. This is the truest statement you'll hear me say today. Because it's true. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you don't ask God for the life of your dreams. You've been trying to figure it out and handle it yourself. Well, how that's working out for you? You know how hard that is to do, man? Because I did it. I did it for 30-some years. I tried to figure it out myself. Man, all, the simple scripture says, you have not cause you ask not. If you up your ask, he automatically ups his give. You his child. God created you. He made you. You ain't just here by no accident. You ain't here cause of your mama and daddy. Where your mama and daddy come from? Somebody, somebody started this whole thing. God created you. He gave you these little simple things you could do. You have not cause you ask not. Second reason people don't have what they want and be through it. They don't have it written down. This is a very, very important piece to success. It's a principle of success. Every wealthy person knows this. I don't know nobody wealthy don't have a vision board. I don't know nobody wealthy don't have their stuff written on a piece of paper. I don't know nobody. I know a lot of people doing good. We have discussed it at great lengths. They've showed me some of their vision boards that why well, I had to go back and change mine. I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. But you got to have a vision board. It's got to be written down. You know why? Because that's a scripture too. Habakkuk 2 and 2. Go, I know where this one is. Habakkuk 2 and 2. Go home and read that one. It says, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, that means take a long time, wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. Man, I'm telling you real now. What I'm telling you works. This ain't no magic trick. If you up your ask and you write everything you want from God on a piece of paper, now here's the exercise I want you to do. This is going to trip you out. Write everything you want from God on a piece of paper. Be as detailed as you can. Write it down. The object for you is to write down 300 things because I know 300 things that you could use. It's going to be hard for you. When you get to number 75, you're going to get stuck because your mind isn't conditioned to think way out there. So you're going to try to stay in your little list. But I want you to just open up your imagination. If you could have anything you wanted, put it on a piece of paper. Anything. How many cars? What kind of car? What color? Where you want your next house to be? Do you want a summer home? Where you want to travel to? How much you want in the bank? How much would you like to have to retire? What you want to leave for your grandkids? How much would you like to give all your siblings? Would you like to one day walk in and there and just give all your family a check? Put everything you want on a piece of paper. Do not stop until you have 300 things. It's going to take you a while. I'm telling you, when you get to 75, you, your brain going to lock up. But keep writing it down. But every morning, read your list. I don't want you watching TV at night. I want you to read your list, uh, unless it's family few. Other than that, I just... Number six, take five minutes and read your list every night, every morning. One year from today, one, wait one year from today, and take a pen out and go down on your list and check off 
anything that has happened for you that's on that list, listen to me. If you do that in faith, if you read your list with the expectation that God is going to do some great things for you, at the end of one year, you will be stunned absolutely stunned at how much stuff comes off that list. I promise you, at least 30 things will be off that list. At minimum, 10% of your list will come true. You know how I know? Because I know a lot of people that can do it. But you know how I really know? Because I did it. When I open up my phone, I wish I had it. My phone is my vision board. My phone ain't got picture no damn dog on it, no sunset, none of that. All of my computers have my vision board on it. Every iPad, tablet I got, laptop. When I pull it, I have my vision board on it. Because that's the signal I'm sending to God that I believe this is what you're going to do for me. You be, I take stuff, I got to get a new vision board now because there's a lot of stuff off that vision board that I put on there a year ago or two years ago that then came true. I'm telling you, y'all, this how this works. You have not cause your ass not and write the vision and make it plain. You do them two things starting today. Write your list, read it every morning, every night. One year, check it off, you'll be stunned. I dare you to try that. Watch and see what God do. God keep all his promises. I'm just telling you, thank y'all. just have to deal with, you know. It's not just happening for Americans. It's not just happening for the poor. Rich, rich people catch it. You understand? It, this, this, this can attack anybody. So it's something we all got to pay attention to. A, a lot of people are looking at this the wrong way. There is a blessing in everything. Behind every moment of adversity in your life, there is a blessing and a lesson. Every moment of adversity has those two things. Pain always leaves a gift. Always. It, it's not going to change for you. It's COVID for everybody. This ain't just you. Your world 42 ain't finna crumble because you got to change your career. You have to change your career. You just said it in the question. Maybe it was time for you to move on. Somebody sent me a plaque today that, one day that said, uh, don't worry about the people that God has removed from your life. He saw things you didn't see. He heard conversations you couldn't hear. And he saw he made moves you wouldn't make. And that's it. So when COVID happens, people get, oh, this door closed. My business closed. My job closed. When, when a door gets shut, all you got to do is walk up the hall. It's more dope. You, this is God. God is, he's everything, man. He got everything. You ain't got to, you ain't got to worry about because your company closed. This ain't the only company. Could it be that he's setting you up for an upward move? But now if you're going to stay there and cry, see, here go the problem with you. Okay, they close your company. You stand at the door, open the door, open the door. The company's closed. You got to open back up. Get some more investors. Open your company. Could it be that all he wants you to do is go, wow, it's been great, been some years, walk up the hall. Could it be that there's a different door that he wants you to go through that was better than the door that got shut in your face? It's really, you have to live your life in the expectation of wonderful things happening. God is a merciful God. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't set you up to fail. You're tripping. You're tripping, man. He only wants to progress his children. That's all he want to do. Even if you're wrong, he forgives us. Just keep moving, man. It ain't nothing. It, this thing right here, really, man, you, you got to look. So many good things have happened to me. Now, look, I just had some painful moments in this like you. But, hey, I look, I look for the bright side. I expect something good happened. I'm back at work. Uh, I don't know what he was doing, but he'd have made a move for me. 
because I ask him to all the time. And then I just sit in expectation and wait and see what he got from me because he got something for me. People, somebody asked me a question the other day. If you could go back to any period in your life, what, what period would you go back to? I ain't ever had it this good. <laughs> this is the best of my life ever been. <laughs> you gotta be nuts. Man, you wouldn't want to be 25 again? Are you kidding me? The 25 year old dude that was me? I'm so glad that idiot is gone. No. Oh. 63 years old, man. It's the best my life ever been. You know what I'm saying? But that's the scripture, though. If you honor me, your latter days will be great. So all I do, I just honor him, and he gonna keep, he gonna keep shining on me. I got to figure it out. I ain't even worried. 2020 was a rough year. Some of another kid said, 2020, man, this has got to be the roughest year of our lives. I got news for you. This ain't even close. This ain't even close to the roughest year of my life, partner. <laughs> I got some years. He said, you've had a worse year than this? Then he started naming all this stuff. Call me Wayne, dog. Call him, dog, my mama died. God's way of training you is preparation. But what most people do is, see, once you get stressed, you don't want that no more. So now you give up, you through. Nobody likes stress because some people just let they self go. But you got to, in order to develop and to change and to grow, stress is necessary. So you got to be willing to go get it every day. There's a story my father told me all the time. Now, I've heard it several different ways. He said, son, he said, every morning on the plains of the eastern Serengeti Desert, there arises a gazelle that realizes that he was run faster than the fastest lion, or he will be eaten and he will die that day. On that same desert arises in the morning a lion that realizes that he must run faster than the fastest gazelle or he will starve and he will die that day. He say, son, the moral of the story is, no matter who you is, when you wake up in the morning, you needs to be running. And so what he taught me was a work ethic of, of how to work in order to get to where you want to go. You got to put yourself under some stress though. See, stress is necessary. God is a trainer. This is what I have learned about it. And all I can tell you is, you know, how I got to be who I am. That's all I can share with you. I got no other stories for you. See, I'm a seed, I really am. I, see, but a seed has to be planted. A seed got to have dirt put on top of it. If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete and walk off, the sun just burn it up. But guess what? Logically, in my mind, it doesn't make sense that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though. See, dirt is necessary for growth and development. Dirt builds character. Dirt, dirt gives you the push-through factor. Dirt makes you come with it when you don't feel like coming with it no more. And you get dirt in a lot of different ways. All of y'all that had dirt thrown on you. And dirt ain't always what you want. It's somebody talking about you down on your job. It's somebody accusing you of something that you didn't do. It's somebody telling you you ain't going to make it. It's somebody sharing information about you that ain't true. That everybody get dirt put on. But see, when you're getting put under that stress, please know God is always working. God is always working, so I smile. Because I know he back there. See, that dirt builds character in you. When they talking about you, it teaches you to withstand it. Then it gives you something to push through. So when you put the seed and you put the dirt on it, if you understand stress, stress really ain't just dirt. See, they don't call it dirt when they plant it. They call it soil. 
because see soil has nutrients in it what the nutrients when people are talking about you dog and you lying on you back by stealing from you talking about you they're actually putting nutrients in you if they put a camera under the ground you'd have seen the seed sprout open and start coming through the dirt because the dirt is necessary so you can prove yourself Everything you see above ground that blossoms and plants and grows and that's beautiful, it was underground one time. All them potatoes, collard greens, they was underground one time. Them apple trees, they was underground one time. So they had to prove themselves. So you want to be successful, well then you got to prove yourself. You got to push through the dirt. You got to come up through here. You got to come out. Then you sprout and then Bishop say, then you become a tree. Next thing you know, you got fruit. So when you're under stress, take the stress for what it is. Don't get fooled. Don't just think, oh, well, man, Lord must not mean for it to be. What you tripping for? What you talking about? How you think you're going to be a plant, a tree, a flower, a bush, and ain't no stress? How you going to get to be that without no dirt? I expect people to talk about me. Matter of fact, I look forward to it now. Do your thing, because if I can weather what happened to me and my family earlier, you can bring whatever you got now. There's some more stuff going around now that's about to happen. Bring it. Because now I have developed a character that is stress. I have soil, enough dirt on me that has provided me with nutrients. Do you realize that every day you thought you wasn't going to make it? Do you remember them days where you thought it was absolutely unbearable and you thought you wasn't going to endure that one? Do you know that your survival rate for every last one of them bad days is 100%? All you got to do is start changing the way you think. It's as simple as, it's not a magic trick. You can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. You can coat your mind from negativity. It's a real simple exercise to do. I do it every morning before I walk out the door. So I walk out as a positive person. You know, I get tired sometimes. That's different from being negative. Because I get mentally drained from my job at times. But to coat your mind from negativity, the way you can put a coating around your mind is with one simple thing, gratitude. Gratitude erases negativity. I'm going to show you how this works. If you wake up in the morning and you start having negative thoughts, man, this ain't my day. I woke up in the morning and I'm tripping. I just don't feel myself. Every time you feel in the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, stop. Just stop for a second and start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Not everything you want, everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. You just haven't gone over the list and taken inventory in a long time. But the fact that you can walk, that's a blessing. The fact that you woke up, that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go somewhere and get yourself something to eat, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go and turn the key and call some place home, that's another blessing. The ability to dream is a blessing. The, the, the fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you're beautiful, that's another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. And I'm just talking to you, I don't even know you. I can give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now. I don't even know you. Start coating your mind with gratitude. It'll change everything for you. Listen, getting successful, whatever you consider successful, if it's rich, whatever, it's not a magic trick. 
It's not God picks certain people he'll make rich and certain people he don't. He gives all of us as his children the power of choice. You have a say-so in that. You can decide to be rich. And with God's help, it's highly doable. But you first have to think it. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is here. I'm no better than none of you. I'm not a better person than you. I'm not a better Christian than you. God don't love me more than you. None of that. If you want to be successful, you have to change this. This has to change. Listen to me. It's not what makes it hard is your lack of belief that it can happen. The fact of it is, though, it's very doable. See, if what you got to change, though, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. So if you're at a place in your life and you ain't happy with it, you have to change some things. But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. And it's not dependent on anybody else. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your coworkers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter what your children think. It don't matter. They have nothing to do with it. This decision is yours and yours alone. It's two people born in a hospital every day. It's a person that's born in a hospital that's going to get a job. And somebody born in a hospital that's going to give them a job. You get to decide which one you got. You get to decide. Let me tell you something. You get to decide if I'm going to be rich, poor, mediocre, plentiful, happy, sad. You, you have a decision to make. Your mind, all right, here we go. This is the teaching. Let me give you this so you can get on with your 2019. You walk in the house, you pick up the remote control. Let me teach you how this works. And you press the power button. What I told you, 2019 will be the best year of your life, but you have to claim it. You have to expect it to be the best year of your life. You have to live your life with the expectation that great things are coming your way. And that's how it works. Now let me teach it to you. You grab your remote, you press the power button. What do you expect to happen? You expect the TV to come on. Guess what? It come on. If you want to see Sports Center, Sports Center Channel 46, and you press 4, 6, and OK or select, what do you expect to come on your TV? Sports Center. And guess what show up? Sports Center. They got the concept of creating a remote from the Bible. See, God is tied to all of this. You better understand what I'm trying to tell you. The Bible says a man is as he thinketh. God created us in his image. God thought of this world. He thought of it, so he created it. So he made you just like him, that your thoughts can create things. He made you just like him. Now you can't go make earth and heaven like he did, but you can make a better world for yourself. There is a scripture, Habakkuk 2 and 2. It says, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, tarry means take a long time, wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. That's in the Bible. That ain't in the rich people's copy. That's in everybody, everybody's Bible. The problem is, everybody don't do it. But it's right there. But you got to do it. I'm just telling you, it's, 
if you don't do it, it's, it's, it's too hard. It's almost impossible. That vision board has changed my life. Everything I put on my vision board, I get. Everything. Now, you have to understand something. It's not going to come when you want it to come. It comes at an appointed time. That's the trick. But the appointed time is what grow people on. Because most of you, when you ask God for something, He sends it, He ships it immediately. As soon as you ask Him something, you really believe He'll do it? He boxes it up and He ships it to you immediately. The problem with the package is, He never gives you the date that the package is going to arrive. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. Because if he told you the date that the package would rely would, would arrive, it would destroy the requirement he has of all of us, which is faith. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. So if you ask God for a million dollars and he tell you I'm gonna give it to you in March of 2020, you wouldn't need no faith. You'd be talking to people crazy because you know in 2020, I'm finna be a millionaire. But he sent a million as soon as you asked for it. But it's going to come at an appointed time. The problem is people stop waiting on the package. Then when it get to you, because he delivers only to Faith Street, when he delivers to you on Faith Street, but you done stepped off of Faith Street, you over here on I don't see how circle. He don't ship that. Instead of staying on Faith Street, you done stepped over here to I Don't Believe It Boulevard or It Took Too Long Avenue. Then the package come to Faith Street is just like the post office in FedEx. If you ain't there to receive it, it got to go back. That's how it works, man. You have control of this. This belongs to you. This is yours. You're the captain. You're the master. You're the foreman, you're the general, you're the head. Don't give control of this to nobody, especially the devil. Do not let Satan come in here and function and operate because he has one mission, to keep you off course, to make you not think it's possible, to make you think that God don't hear you. His job is only to destroy you to make sure that you don't become what God intended for you to become. That's the mission of the devil. Now, if you don't believe in the devil, I, this conversation ain't for you. If you don't believe in God, this conversation ain't for you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people who are spiritually based. If you get control of this, that's why I'm telling you these two books. I'm, look, the, the, the best book you can read is the Bible. If you read the book of Proverbs over and over and over, it's the book of wisdom and understanding. It would really help your life if you just read. I'm going to be honest with you. That's the only book in the Bible I've read cover to cover. I've only read the book of Proverbs. I've read some scriptures every now and then. I only know five or six scriptures by heart. I'm just going to be real with you. But I've memorized them five or six scriptures, and them five or six got me here today. I know a lot of people that know the Bible inside out ain't got nothing to show for it. You know why? Because they memorized it, but they didn't apply it. I have applied six scriptures to change my life. But these books that I told you about, Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale and The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz, you know what it does? It just teaches you how this works. Once you get this, y'all, you can change everything. Do you understand? Negativity, let me just give you this and I'm going to walk in. Negativity, you can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. You can coat your mind from negativity. It's a real simple exercise to do. I do it every morning before I walk out the door. So I walk out as a positive person. You know, I get tired sometimes. That's different from being negative because I get mentally drained from my job at times. But to coach your mind from negativity, the way you can put a coating around your mind is with one simple thing, gratitude. Gratitude erases negativity. I'm gonna show you how this works. If you wake up in the morning and you start having negative thoughts, man, this ain't gonna be I'm gonna go outside, I'm tripping, I just don't feel myself. 
Every time you feel in the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, stop. Just stop for a second. And start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Not everything you want. Everything you already have. Because what you have is substantial. You just haven't gone over the list and taken inventory in a long time. But the fact that you can walk, that's a blessing. The fact that you woke up, that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go somewhere and get yourself something to eat, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go and turn the key and call someplace home, that's another blessing. The ability to dream is a blessing. The, the, the fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you're beautiful, that's another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. And I'm just talking to you, I don't even know you. I could give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now. I don't even know you. Start coating your mind with gratitude. It'll change everything for you. God is good, man. You ought to give him a chance to work in your life. Thank you all for coming. Let me tell you something before you go. Whenever people come see me live, um, I try to, 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 um, I try to say something meaningful to people. You know, I'm in the laugh business. That's my gift. That's what God gave me at birth. Your gift is a thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. I want to tell you something that can help enrich your life. It's a sure sign from God that he ain't through with you because he wakes you up in the morning. When he's done, you won't wake up more. But as long as you're waking up, that's, that means he has something for you that he hasn't been able to give to you for whatever the reason. I'm going to help you get to that reason a little bit quicker. I want to tell you something that I learned that changed my life. I was reading a book one time that had a quote in there from Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. If you think about that, that's a really, really true statement. Because everything you see in this world came from somebody's imagination. Everything. Somebody was talking on the phone one day on that wall phone, connected to the cord, and tried to walk, and it didn't go no further. And he wanted to just go outside and get something out of the car. He said, somebody said, you know what? I wish I could take this phone outside. Everybody in here got a cell phone. It was in somebody's imagination. Somebody imagined that. Somebody imagined everything. Somebody got tired of walking. Somebody got tired of driving cars. Somebody said, we're going to fly. You're not fitting to fly. Everybody in here have been on the plane. See, your imagination is the evidence of things not seen. You know why they call it the evidence of things not seen? Your imagination, you the only one can see it. You the only one can see it. See, so all this stuff you've been imagining was not some hocus pocus. When you imagine stuff, it's actually God showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. That's what your imagination is. Why do you keep imagining yourself with a second home? Because God wants you to have a second home. Why do you keep imagining yourself in a supervisory capacity on another job? Because God really wants you to have that. Why you keep dreaming of opening a business one day? That's because that's what God really got for you. And he put it in your imagination. The problem with your imagination, though, is you tell it to the wrong people. If you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. You can't, oh, man. Think about this in your life. How many times have you had this really incredible idea and you took it to your family, and your friends. You shared it with them and they shot it down. You know why they shot it down? Because they couldn't see it. Because God didn't put it in their imagination. He put it in yours. It was your evidence of things not seen. 
See, all this stuff you've been imagining, you ought to start working on it. Because that's what God really got for you. Your real life is in your imagination. I'm here to tell you that. You think I'm here by accident? I'm here because he put this in my imagination when I was 10. When I was 10, he showed me I was going to be on TV. That's all I ever wanted. The assignment when I was in the sixth grade was everybody write their name on a piece of paper and write what you want to be. You know what I wrote on my paper? I want to be on TV. Now, the, the problem I had, though, was I used to suffer with a serious stuttering problem. I couldn't talk outside my house. I stuttered for years. I flunked out of school. I'm on my third marriage. I lost everything I ever owned twice. I've been homeless and lived in a car for three years. But at 10, though, I wrote on a piece of paper, I want to be on TV. So the teacher went around the room and read everybody's paper. She had you stand up when she called your name. And the only assignment was your name and what you want to be. Doctor, lawyer, dentist, basketball player, football player. I wrote, I want to be on TV. She saved me for last. She said, look, Stevie, come to the front. Now I'm thinking, I'm going to the front because I got the best answer. Because ain't nobody had put that on their paper. She called me to the front. I'm thinking I'm going to give me a gold star. But I was wrong about that. She called me to the front to humiliate me. First of all, you know I can't talk. I suffered with stuttering stammer so bad, man. I couldn't talk at all. And that lady lit in on me. Why did you write this on your paper? And I'm standing there, I can't talk. I, 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 who in this school ever been on TV? I, I, who in your family ever been on TV? I, 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 who in this neighborhood ever been on TV? I, I, I'm, I'm crushing that. I'm standing there dying. She said, look at you standing there. You can't even talk. How they gonna put somebody like you on TV? So every Christmas, I send her a flat screen TV. Because I don't want her to miss me. I do not want her to miss not now episode of me. Because I wanted her to see what God had done for me. The fact that you couldn't see it, it wasn't for you to see. He put it in my imagination. But after three years of homelessness, losing everything I ever owned twice, suffering through the flunking out of school, go home and cut your TV on. That little boy with the stuttering problem, he all over that TV. You can't cut your TV on. You can't cut your TV on not now, day of the week, and you don't see that little boy. That little boy with the stuttering problem is all over that TV because God put it in my imagination. All I did was hang on to that thought. I just kept hoping. I just kept hoping that what I had wrote on the paper would come true. Ah, a lot of times it wasn't about no faith. I didn't believe it sometimes. When you homeless and living in a car, how you see yourself as a TV star? But I just kept hanging on there. Because my mama was a Sunday school teacher. I kept hearing her say, God. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. Why do you think he keeps waking you up? Because he got more for you. He got way more for you. He got plans for you. But he needs your faith. He just needs you to call him. He needs you to dust off your imagination and just go for it. You got to try. Quit waking up thinking you ain't got no say-so in your life. You have a choice in this matter. You can't stop what happened to you. But you can doggone show do something about what happened to you. Life is 10% what happened to you. It's 90% what you do about it. Somebody in your family gonna die. Somebody in here gonna get fired. Somebody here gonna get an eviction notice. Somebody gonna get laid off. Somebody company gonna close. That's life. Somebody you love gonna break up with you. That's life. But what you gonna do about it though? Since it's gonna happen anyway. Trust me. Go home and ask God to open up your imagination and then pursue it with everything in you and watch what he do for you. Appreciate y'all. Talking to my trainer the other day, 
be working out in my backyard, and he was wearing my ass out, man. And I sat down on the wall, and I said, man, I'm struggling today. This is hard. My trainer's a younger guy. And he said, what do you mean? I said, man, this workout is hard. He said, no, man, this is hard. He said, how you came from a poor kid in the projects to this house you got in this neighborhood and the TV star, he said, that's hard. And I had to catch myself. Because working out ain't near as hard as the struggle to get where you want. Everybody in this room wants two things. Everybody wants to be successful and everybody wants to be happy. I'm going to tell you something about that. That that happiness and success is available for every last one of you. But I'm going to tell you what you're going to have to do. You're going to change your mindset. If you're planning on being successful, you have to change this here. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is right here. It ain't no difference. It ain't none. I ain't got no more than none of y'all got. God gave me the same thing he gave y'all. God loved me the same as he loved all y'all. He don't love me more than he loved you. But you have got to change your mindset. You got to get funky if you want to be successful. If you think that they're going to mail this money to your house, you're dead wrong about that. If you think they're going to pave the way for you and make it easy, you're dead wrong about that. If you want to be successful, you got to change your mind and you're going to have to have some faith. If you ain't got no faith, if you ain't got no relationship with God, you finna make this thing way harder than it's got to be. And I'm flat out tell you that right now. Look at here. You think you gonna be successful without God? Let me ask you something. How that's working out for you? I am here to tell you that you can come from nothing and become something. But you gonna have to have God. Now you can come up with another way, but there ain't a book out there on the market how to make it without God. It's a thousand books about faith and how to make it with God. You're not gonna make it without it. You can short circuit your ticket by in every living soul. He never created a person that he didn't give a gift to. All you got to do is uncover that gift that he gave you and start using it the Bible says your gift will make room for you. Let me tell you something a guy told me one time. He said, uh, Steve, I ain't thinking nothing of it. He said, see what he's driving. See the house he's living in. See who's breathing in. So it took me about six months and I was thinking about it. I decided to follow my boss home. I really did. So I got out and I just sat in the park a lot. He worked late. I just waited. We started driving home. The car he was driving was not the car I dreamed of. Then he pulled up in front of the house. And the house he pulled up in front of was not the house that I was dreaming of owning. And then his wife came to the door. And when she came to the door, that damn show wasn't who I was dreaming or opening up the door for me every day. And he told me, he said, you will never make more money than your boss will. So if that's the car he driving, that's the car you're going to be in. If that's the car he, house he live in, that's the house you will be living in. And if that's who greet him at the door, that's pretty much the chick you're going to get. After, I would, I could have, I could have dealt with the car. I could have dealt with the house. But when that chick came to that front door and I looked at her, I said, I got to quit this job. Because that just wasn't what I had dreamed of. You have got to make some decisions in your life but you got to tie it to this gift. Your gift is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your God-given gift. He didn't hide it from you. He didn't put it under the rocks. He didn't hide it in the ocean. It, it ain't under, it, it, you don't need no map to find it. God put it right here when he made it. All y'all are gifted something. The Bible says your gift will make room for you, put you in the presence of great men. 
That's a scripture. That ain't Ethereum. See, I ain't got one gift. I have the ability to take information and transpose it into comedy immediately. I don't even have to think about it. I don't even have to. It's just what I do. I don't practice it. It's just, it just come natural to me. You've seen people who open their mouth and they just say, they can just say, and I don't care how hard you rehearse, your can't sing like that. Through all the things I've gone through in my life, I had a lot of, a lot of downs. How did I keep the faith? There was a couple of reasons. Number one, I know from living that if you quit whatever you're trying to accomplish, if you quit, whatever you were trying to accomplish can never happen. There's not even a remote possibility. If you quit, there is no chance of it popping back up again, coming back later. Quitting is guaranteed failure. Now, when you're trying, you're going to fail. But quitting, just stopping, that was the number one thing I understood. And then number two, you have to make sure that your dreams, your aspirations and goals are so big that not accomplishing them is not an option. It's just not an option. You have to want something so big that it wakes you up in the middle of the night. You have to want something so big that you think about it all the time. You have to want something so big that it drives you to wake up when you don't want to. It keeps you up at night when you long been sleepy. It makes you show up, do things you wouldn't normally do. It requires extra. If you want to be extraordinary and not ordinary, if you want to be ordinary, live your life. But if you want to be extraordinary, you have to be extra. If you put extra on top of ordinary, that word is extraordinary. It requires an extra effort. If, now, if you don't want to do the extra effort, you finna be regular. There's nothing wrong with being regular. A lot of people are happy being regular. I just wasn't. I ain't want to be regular. I didn't want no regular life. I didn't want no regular house. I didn't want no regular car. I didn't want no regular clothes. I didn't want no regular checking account. I just didn't want it. I wanted to have an exceptional home. I wanted to have an exceptional bank account. I wanted to travel in exceptional places. Now, if you don't want that, it's perfectly fine. You can be really happy being ordinary. But if something's burning in you, you got to deal with it. If you don't deal with it, you're going to be disappointed. So being regular is cool. There's nothing wrong with it. You get a regular job, regular house, regular car. You get regular money. You have regular hours. You can dress regular. You just go to the family reunion. You take your ass back home. You just travel regular. You go on vacation once a year. It's cool. You can... Get, the, get you a coach ticket, re economy ticket, regular. You want to fly first class? You want to sit in the front of the plane? See, let me tell you something. You know what you ought to do? Save your money and buy a first class ticket. This is how you train yourself to be successful. Save your money. Get an upgrade. Buy a first class ticket. Because when you sit in first class, you're going to understand something. The seats are wider. You get a choice of meals, chicken, beef, or fish. You get a bowl of warm nuts. They give you a hot towel to wipe your hands. Why do you think when their plane take off, they close the curtain to first class? Because they can't let these regular people, they cannot let you see what the f is going on up there because you're going to want it back there, but you didn't pay to get it. Hey, what are they doing? They're serving warm nuts. Where's our nuts? Wait a minute. 
They didn't get charged for the food. 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 Didn't get charged for their food was free. They didn't pay for the headsets. They're watching all the movies. Why don't we have that? Because you didn't pay for it. So they closed the curtain so they don't have to deal with your regular ads. Wondering what's going on in first class. Once you buy a first class ticket, it becomes very difficult now for you to walk past those seats. Now you're gonna know what's going on. So when you treat yourself first class, you are conditioning your mind to now behave and do the things that produce first class results. So if you ever sit in first class, you'll know, you, coach, coaches, the little tight ass chairs, you in the middle seat, you back there by the bathroom, the chair don't recline. It's horrible. First class, big seats. That's why Dick Gregory said, whenever you can treat yourself first class, you should, because it conditions the mind. Once you fly first class, you never go back. Once you get a private jet, you don't even want to fly first class because you're on a private jet. You ain't got to take your shoes off at the airport. They ain't open your bag. Your car pull around. They open the door. You walk up the steps. They take you right to where you're going. Then it's another car. When you walk down the steps, you don't even go. Baggage claim. They put your bag straight off the plane in the car. You don't go to none of that. You fly private, you'll never want to fly first class again because you get conditioned. All you gotta do is you can condition yourself. Once you buy a really nice dress, you don't want a cheap dress no more. You want another nice dress. Once you buy some Christian Louboutins with the red bottoms, you want all your shoes to have red bottoms on. Cause you know, men like that red on the bottom of that shoe. I don't know what it is, but when you walking away, and we see that red bottom, Telling you, being successful is a mental condition. You can all mentally condition yourself to being successful. All you got is your mind. You're in control of Behind every moment of adversity in your life, two things will happen. There is a lesson and there is a blessing. Every moment of adversity has those two things that come with it. There's always a lesson and there's always a blessing. Pain always leaves a present. Every time you're in pain, it leaves a gift behind. So what happened was, after all of that happened, I got a call from a company called T-Mobile. The Super Bowl is a month after that. They brought me down to do a Super Bowl commercial. A Super Bowl commercial in the United States is the most highest watched program on television. These commercials are tens of millions of dollars. They will pay you millions of dollars to be in a Super Bowl commercial. They paid me so much money to be in a Super Bowl commercial acting like I gave the wrong answer to the telephone company to reenact the Miss Universe thing, they paid me what I make on Miss Universe times 10. And then 14 countries sent my wife and our letter saying that was the most honorable an honest thing they've ever seen in the history of television. They gave my wife and I 14 villas around the world. There are 14 villas that my wife and I can go to, to in Curacao, the Maldives, uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, France, that we can go to anytime for vacation. So, behind that, 
a lot of good happen. That's why when you have bad moments in your life, you just have to ride them out. Because God always has a gift behind every moment of pain that you have. When a man leaves you, there is a gift behind him leaving. Sometimes the breakup is the blessing. See, sometimes you got to get rid of a man in order for God to give you the man that you really need. So sometimes losing a man is not a loss. You just have to hang in there. He might have something better for you. So every time something bad happens, you just have to wait on the lesson and the blessing. It always happens. It always happens. You just can't act too miserable. Oh, something happened to me. Oh, my man walked out on me, all me and the dogs. No, they're not. You just had one dog. He was the dog. Just wait. Trust me, I know how that worked too. I'm on my third marriage. Trust me, I know. I've been with the wrong one a couple of times. And then, but I was the wrong one because I kept picking. Then after I got really messed up, I said, God, I'll tell you what, I'm through. You picked the one for me. Send me Marjorie.